Chris King! Eh! 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 Yes, Senpai, please! Eh! Eh! <laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally a science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. My goodness, I saw Chris Trucker posted. I had an emergency Twitch stream. I'm like, everybody, get in here right now. I'm gonna read it live, live. And now it's probably coming to you a couple days later. But hey, I hopped on it as soon as it was fresh. Hopefully uh, it has some preservatives in it or something like that. That will keep it palatable to you no matter how many days after its creation you consumed it. <laughs> no judgment. We don't need to worry about uh, norovirus or anything like that here. Although, this story might turn your stomach just a little bit. The poopy coom man, as we've taken to calling him, he's definitely a hard one to deal with, but he also manages to bring the cringe, the laughs. I, I really do like this saga, and it seems like a lot of you guys do as well, so that's what we're gonna do. Front load this one, let's go ahead and get it in. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash neckbeard stories, a cringe. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number five. <laughs> Posted by user Mommy Honker Donkers. <laughs> oh, he's in here again. My goodness, I like the, the titling, you know? Just short and sweet, completely understandable, just sequential. My co-pilot, yeah, he's still a neckbeard. This is part number five. What do you want from me? I ain't all that creative. <laughs> <laughs> Which we know is not true because I've read his stories and he's definitely got uh, some viewpoints But he just doesn't want to showcase that in the title. I guess I'm not gonna rest the guy for his titles. That's fine <laughs> Hey there gang It's that time again. Oh, we're so glad to see you back. This one got out really fast I think it's been a week since the last one. So yes, your timing impeccable I've got nothing to do right now, aside from binging Red X YouTube videos. <laughs> I do appreciate that. So let's get into it and talk a little bit more about Chris. Chris doesn't know about the YouTube videos, does he? Or does he? <laughs> Maybe he does, and he's just so unself-aware that he doesn't think that it, it could possibly be talking about him or something like that. <laughs> Maybe you just watch other Red X sagas and purposely avoid the Chris Trucker ones. I don't know. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to think about. Maybe you got some AirPods or something. Maybe you can't hear anything. God knows I would invest in some AirPods if dude's listening to anime uh, waifu podcasts all the time. Anyways, so who is Chris? Well, Chris is a big, fat, sweaty man. <laughs> And he also happens to be my co-pilot. He likes methamphetamine, truck stop prostitutes, and anime. <laughs> uh, what a trifecta, bro. Who would have ever thought that these things would meet? I mean, okay, meth, meth and prostitutes <laughs> at the truck stop, I get it. But where does anime come into this equation? How did he get into it? <laughs> Is this the chicken before the egg? <laughs> I got a lot of questions. Chris and I work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving the big rig down the road to wherever the hell it's going. <laughs> That's right. I'm just following orders, as they say. He's surrounded by an offensive and impenetrable aura of spray-on deodorant and poopy cum stinky stank. <laughs> uh... Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> when he's not getting naked in the back of the truck and exposing his poopy streaked underwear in the open air of the cab. That's <laughs> terrible. Uh, just imagine. I mean, a truck cab is big. I can only really relate it to like the interior of a car or a truck, but it's still not big enough to, to air it out enough. As soon as you catch a whiff of those poopy streaks, you are breathing in his fecal matter. Those molecules 
<laughs> are finding their way into your nose. <laughs> uh, and I hate it. Honestly, th this is some shit that I would fight about. I cannot have this. <laughs> so yeah, when he's not doing all that, he's battling an ingrained Pavlovian response about jacking off in the shower. <laughs> Uh, every truck stop that they hit up across this great nation, I'm sure Chris has jerked off in the shower. I mean, he hasn't been the first, I'm sure, but he might be the first one to complete the whole tour. <laughs> every truck stop in the nation. Let's do this thing! We're setting records. This is how he's going to establish his legacy, I guess. <laughs> Whenever he sees a truck stop, he feels absolutely compelled to pull over and uh, clean up. Yeah, clean up his fucking pipes, that is. <laughs> I don't know if the dude has ever taken like a real shower. I'm pretty sure he just goes in there to jerk it and then comes out feeling refreshed. I mean, you do have to get the poison out. I get it. This dude probably does not have a lady to call his own. Except for, of course, the, the lot lizards that he's so fond of. But yeah, maybe he, you know, drives better if he's not as coom-brained. I guess that only lasts for about five minutes. <laughs> and then the poison starts creeping back in. Ah, uh, you have an addiction, Chris. It's sad to see. Why? How did he become like this? I need answers, goddammit! <laughs> he is as clueless and entitled as they come, believing even the lies that he tells others to get what he wants. The worst part is, I still ride with him to this very day. Oh God, have mercy on our souls. <laughs> and I don't think Chris will ever be fired. If it hasn't happened yet, then it just ain't gonna happen. And OP ain't gonna quit. So here we are stuck between a rock and a hard place. But hey, viewers, at least you and I get to reap the benefits. Enjoy some nice stinky coom cringe. <laughs> this story is a bit of an old one, from way back. These were during the days of struggle, as I've come to call them. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the very first initial days, before the new way was established, it was probably a very difficult time. And yes, it was a dark time, a time well before I had completely broken the poopy coom man out of his habit of jerking off inside of the truck cabin. <laughs> Stop! 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 Uh, oh, this guy, dude. He really does think that he's getting away with it. He's like, OP will never know. Like, dude, I'm sitting 10 feet away. I can still smell your dick, all right? <laughs> Please stop. Those molecules are going in my nose. Very disturbing. So the sun was shining that beautiful summer day as Chris and I were on a haul from San Diego to somewhere in Northeast Montana, taking a shipping container along for the ride. Hooray! What were you hauling? Doesn't matter. <laughs> the day started just like any other with Chris demanding that he drive the truck out of port and the city because well, according to him, only real men can drive trucks, <laughs> so you need to step aside. Oh, wow. He's definitely getting uh, his alpha pheromones going. That's what all this is. He's trying to cuck OP. <laughs> I'm the one true truck driver. God, imagine how horrifying this story would have turned out if Mommy Honker Donkers was a woman. Which people have said in the past, like, aren't you misgendering them? No. Confirmed, Mommy Honker Donkers is a dude. <laughs> he just likes Mommy Honker Donkers. <laughs> uh, we have talked just a little bit. And yeah, he is a, a relatively older gentleman. And I got a hell of a lot of respect for him in the short chats that we've had. Anyways, the anime podcast that Chris was so fond of blared through the truck speakers and... I hypnotically stared out the window as the miles passed. Yes, just daydream that you're somewhere else. Can we not be here right now? Please, thank you. 
<laughs> Today must have been a particularly spicy day because barely a minute went by without Chris shouting in broken Japanglish at the tinny recording that waxed poetic about the virginal virtues of their favorite animated miladies. Japanglish? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of like it. Gandhi, <laughs> back! Those are the two words that he knows. <laughs> he hasn't bothered to learn anything else. See, this is why we go for subs over dubs. Isn't that right, comment section? Uh, now I've just started a war. All right, I'm sorry. I take it back. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Today's discussion must have been rather controversial because... Chris started to rant and rave like a lunatic at me about the opinions presented. <laughs> uh, can you not see how uninvested I am? I just got a dead, glazed look in my eyes. <laughs> and you want to talk to me about anime waifus? Oh, God. The glazed look has increased tenfold. I can't absorb whatever you're saying, and I don't care to. Yeah, I, I didn't care about any of that, of course, and nor did I even venture to reply. I try not to encourage him, you know? <laughs> That's the smartest way to deal with it. He must have seethed for his entire shift that day as I listened to him bitch and moan about how if he ever encountered one of those beta male podcast nerds trash talking his cartoon love in real life, he'd totally kick their asses. <laughs> Uh, yes, Chris, you're super tough and whatever, whatever. Is this really the hill you want to die on? <laughs> Dude didn't even make it to the top of the hill. He had heart failure before he reached the top from his girth and also consuming meth regularly. I thought meth heads were skinny. Never mind, whatever. <laughs> As OP says, the virtues of your waifu is definitely the hill to die on, it seems. I disagree, but, you know, different strokes for different folks or something like that. That first shift passed without any real incident, as is usually the case, and we ended up pulling off somewhere near the edge of California when Chris had to clock out. Yeah, he had to clock out to go pull off again, you know what I'm saying? Hey! Oh! Please don't think about that. <laughs> uh, it was my turn to drive! And as I have come to know, when I get to drive, that is when the fun really begins. Yeah, goddamn these state mandated brakes, these rules about not driving for too long, pshuh. <laughs> Chris and I had been driving together for a while, but not very long at this point in time. We were somewhere between the, I'm gonna get naked in the back of the truck and rub one out while you're at the wheel. And I need to pull over at the truck stop to jack off in the shower stalls. Yep, as soon as he clocks out, he pulls his cocks out. All four of them. He's got four. It's crazy. You should see that shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know how this happened. He spent some time at Chernobyl or something. <laughs> so yeah, his coping mechanism, you know. If you guys happen to recall an earlier story... I had improvised a weapon to wield against the maniacal masturbator of the big rig. <laughs> uh, which, yeah, that's his title, 100%. Every time he would go to choke the bishop, I started to moan like an Asian schoolgirl in heat. <laughs> and he would promptly lose his mood when he realized that a middle-aged man with a beer gut was screaming, Oh yes, Chris Coon! It's so good! Woo! A wall! While you're driving a big rig. This story is so fucking ridiculous, man. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. It had served me very well so far. And the musty spunk that usually filled the cab uh, uh, <laughs> had been absent for the last few hauls. 
It was a glorious tactic because it just worked. And then so far as it continued to work, that weapon I would continue to wield without shame. As you should. You gotta do what you gotta do in these days and times. Ain't no shame about that. <laughs> it's not that I enjoy making the Japanese schoolgirl voice, okay? It's the fact that I don't want this dude masturbating right behind my head. <laughs> if you gotta sue me, then sue me! Well, it didn't take long for Chris to try and make his move. Once I got behind the wheel, he was sexually insatiable. <laughs> I mean, insatiable is usually an okay thing, you know? But this has gone beyond insatiable, and we are now firmly in addiction territory. <laughs> Addicted to dick. <laughs> as I took us out of the truck stop, on that swampy summer day, Chris told me that he was gonna go, uh, eh, clean up real quick. Yeah, we know what that's code for. <laughs> clean the pipes. I told him that he better close the goddamn curtain this time. Spoilers, he didn't close the goddamn curtain. <laughs> and I told him he better not be trying to spank it. Spoiler, again, he was absolutely, definitely trying to spank it. <laughs> uh, it's just like a big fat two-year-old or something. You gotta yell at him every second to, to keep him on the correct path. You need a nap? Go have a nap or something, but it's so not cool to do this while somebody else is in the car with you. It's not cool to do it in the car regardless, but goddamn. <laughs> Just endlessly uncomfortable. The rustling of fabric heralded the removal of his clothes and the subsequent release of the poopy cum stinky stank all throughout that tiny enclosed space. God, <laughs> somebody help me. <laughs> uh, uh, I rolled down the window, shouting at him like a madman to put his goddamn clothes back on. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> Chris said that he couldn't clear himself while he was clothed and that I would just have to deal with it. <laughs> uh, oh, he's just such a mess. You don't need to do a thorough cleaning, Chris. It's fine. Wait until we get to the truck stop and have a shower or something. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. <laughs> I shouted back to him to just wait until we finally pulled over. But that was not going to happen today. God damn it, dude. <laughs> I will pull over. I will stop this myself. Go back there with a rolled up newspaper, taser, whatever it takes to get him to stop, all right? You think I'm not gonna abuse my coworker if he's masturbating near me? <laughs> I will. You've crossed the line, now I gotta cross the line. We're meeting force with force or something like that. It didn't take long for the spraying of aerosol and the laborious breathing and the soft rhythmic slapping of wet flesh oh god that's descriptive <laughs> started to herald the stuff of my worst nightmares not today i swore i once more withdrew excalibur from its sheath and swung it at the aroused atrocity with which i battled daily ah uh, chris king eh 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 Yes, senpai, please! Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no! <laughs> uh, yeah, he's so itchy. That's all that is. <laughs> uh. He responded, not with the usual, don't interrupt me while I'm cleaning up. God, I, I wish that were his response. No, instead he offered me, oh yeah, you like that, don't you? You filthy little slut. Oh no. <laughs> Emotional damage. <laughs> EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! 
I wish. How I wish it weren't that way. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Uh, oh, the cringe is so deep, dude. <laughs> I hate this. Uh, my blood ran cold. I instantly went silent. Blow, parried, mission, compromised, neckbeard, aroused. <laughs> I cried inside as the moist stank of blown loads flooded every crack and crevice of the cab. <laughs> Stinks like sex in here. <laughs> uh, everything is terrible and I can't take it back. <laughs> uh, why have you done this, OP? <laughs> every day we stray further from God's light. <laughs> Uh, I retched. I turned the fan on in the cab and set it to max to try and push the smell out into the open air by way of the windows. Yes, anywhere but here, please. <laughs> it helped, but the stank lingered for a while, regardless of my efforts. And after Chris finished spraying his spray, not the aerosol spray, <laughs> I heard him getting dressed. Eventually, he waddled up to the passenger seat beside me and settled in with a loud oof. Yeah, oof indeed. <laughs> this is the kind of oof that will never come out. Uh! <laughs> a look of post-coital bliss was etched into his pig-like face. God, dude. Oh. Doesn't coitus require another person? Is this waifu pillow back there? <laughs> uh, I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. Not a single word passed between us. I had nothing to say, after all. I mean, what can you even say after that? Yeah, best not to talk about it, I guess. <laughs> uh... I, I hate this whole situation, thank you. What conversation can possibly be had after you mimic anime sex sounds to put off a man who is into anime sex after he gets off to your anime sex sounds that were meant to disrupt said anime sexy time? <sighs> I should have known better than to think that it would end any other way, to be honest. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> It couldn't work forever. Eventually, you were going to be incorporated. That's just how these things go. Chris was a disgusting reprobate with zero shame. In retrospect, really, it was only a matter of time until he learned to, um, appreciate what I was doing instead of recoiling from it. <laughs> How's your anime girl voice, OP? That's what I want to know. Maybe it was too accurate. You gotta, like, do it like Toad or something. Like, oh, senpai. Wow, that's great. Uh, uh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes, the time had finally <clears throat> come. <laughs> You've come. I have come. See what he did there? Yeah, that's a good one. As we sat there in silence, him triumphantly stewing in his own sweat and ejaculate. Ugh. I seethed. It lasted for a very tense minute when he decided to break it. Oh, please, just, just let it drop. Let it be what it be, all right? We don't need to talk about it. You know... <laughs> I don't mind the sounds you make while I, while I clean up anymore. Oh my god, why are you calling it clean up? We both know what <laughs> what's going on in there. You don't have to be coy about it. I bet that's what his mommy calls it. He's like, don't, don't come in here when I'm cleaning my room. <laughs> I said don't disturb you, I'm cleaning my room. Honestly... 
I kind of enjoy them now. He just had to gloat. I'm a damn good driver, but for just a second, I almost swerved off the fucking road. Maybe intentionally, maybe not. <laughs> I bet it was intentionally. <laughs> uh, I thought about doing it when I knew he was back there doing what he was doing. I'm like, just crash into something. Hit the brakes really hard and like fling him off the bed or something. But then he comes rolling into the, the front of the cab completely nude and God, <laughs> that's a problem I don't want to deal with either. <laughs> Busting a nut wasn't enough for Chris today. He just had to proverbially rub my nose in it to assert his dominance. Oh, rub your nose in it. Oh, <laughs> please stop. Uh, I am glad you clarified that it was proverbially, but it still brings a real big chunk of cringe. It powders my spine just a little bit more. You knew what you were doing when you wrote that sentence, didn't you? Please don't write that sentence no more. <laughs> I sent up a prayer to God that this could not be happening. <sighs> but it is. It's your life, and it's ending one minute at a time. Terrifying! <laughs> Sadly, it was happening, and the ride had only just begun. I want to get off the ride. <laughs> It was only maybe an hour into my shift. Rest assured, it was gonna be a very, very long day. The summer heat only seemed to magnify the oppressive humidity of his aromatic spunk. <laughs> aromatic spunk. Uh, oh yeah, that paints a picture, doesn't it? God, I'm suffering. <laughs> Whenever he would lumber to the back of the cab, and I, disillusioned and depressed, and forced to drive that fucking truck down the road without reprieve, had to sit there and just grin and bear it. <laughs> uh, oh God, we're all we're all grinning and bearing it with you, though. If it makes you feel better, <laughs> your suffering was not for nothing. Now it brings joy to thousands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I just had to endure my suffering as Chris went back there every hour, maybe more, like clockwork to go and cleanse the built-up pressure from inside his sweating groin. Jesus fucking wept. <laughs> <laughs> We're all weeping, man. Uh, why? Why is this situation... Good God, every hour? This guy, he got problems, man. <laughs> I guess he's like deeply depressed or something, and this is the only endorphin rush that he gets during the day. God, I don't know what <laughs> Mommy Hogger Doggers did in a past life to deserve this, <laughs> but it must have been fucking horrible. <laughs> uh, I hope you find some, some relief eventually. I mean, it does seem they've worked it out since, but I don't know, man. This is this is a rough period to get through. I can't tell you how many times he went back there during my shift, because after a while, I became numb to it <laughs> and stopped paying attention. <laughs> you are essentially an abuse victim at this point. <laughs> Maybe if you can't beat him, join him, you know? Put the truck on autopilot, pull your dick out, <laughs> just go back there. <laughs> That's the only way to get him to stop, right? <laughs> uh, I probably just made this even worse. My complaints fell on deaf ears each time I raised them, and eventually, I just gave up. The curtain never closed, and the stroking didn't stop. Why did the curtain not close? Okay, never mind, don't go back there. He wants you to get involved or something? It's like a, an invitation, right? Hey, the door's open for you, P. Just walk on in. I would rather die. <laughs> and uh, his aura, the poopy coom stink stank, <laughs> continued to assault my old factories. He must have gone back there maybe more than 10 times over the course of my shift. Jesus Christ, man. 
That is so deep. <laughs> How did you not quit? I would have quit. I don't give a shit. I'll get a new job with a new trucking company if I really do like trucking. <laughs> I just can't live like this anymore. When finally the day was coming to a close, we pulled into a truck stop somewhere in the middle of Utah. Chris happily got up from out of the passenger seat and decided that he was gonna uh, go get a shower. And I said, good, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he smiled and in his most seductive voice replied, Is that any way to talk to your Chris Kud? Oh. Oh! oh. <laughs> My spine is officially powdered. My soul has left my body. I can't. I can't. <laughs> he was escalating the violence. Absolutely. This cannot go uncontested. We had gone from enemies to uncomfortably sexual and non-consensual bromance. I screamed, get out! <laughs> and he waddled away <laughs> into the travel plaza. Presumably to go and clean his pipes in the shower stalls once more. Ugh, Jesus, Jesus, he's unstoppable. He is a force of nature, and not like a good force of nature. He's like the worst side of everything that has ever existed. I could have wept then and there. I certainly wanted to do so. I mean, it's tough, you know? I had a family back at home and mouths to feed and I needed the job. And it was just my luck that I was stuck with a beast as foul as Chris. Backing out on my contract would bite me in the ass and hurt everyone I loved by extension, so I had to stick it through. God damn, I didn't know any of that, OP. You are the man of men. What is that that Gus says on Breaking Bad? A man provides. Whether he's loved or appreciated, it doesn't matter. A man provides. And that's exactly what you've done. And I, I do presume that you're also loved and appreciated, as damn well you should be. <laughs> Putting up with all this. You probably don't even tell your wife about the, the problems that you've endured. You're just like, it was fine. <laughs> my soul left my body and I still want to die, but it was fine. <laughs> I found my resolve, and I swore to myself that I would fix this situation. Something had to be done, without a doubt. You can't continue to live like this. What the hell's all that? <laughs> I sat down then and enjoyed a mostly peaceful night without Chris. Yeah, lock the doors. <laughs> Make sure he don't come back. He was off somewhere doing Chris things. And by that, I mean probably just looking for speed and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I had settled into my bunk and was mindlessly watching TV. Somehow, in my haphazard browsing, I got to Caesar Milan, that dog trainer dude, and I was watching him explain conditioning and response. It was fascinating stuff, honestly. You know, dogs don't possess any sense of time, right? And they simply react based off of ingrained and repeated psychological associations to stimuli, and for a second, I thought about Chris. Oh my god, you're gonna dog trainer him? Just like Cartman on fucking South Park? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't see why. Hey! Don't look at the child, just keep looking at me. <laughs> oh yeah, it was all coming together. Like a puppy that had been allowed to do what it wanted for far too long, I had to knuckle up and train him. I had to teach him to associate jacking off in the truck, not just with awkward, but with bad. Furthermore, I had to associate not jerking off in the truck with not only acceptable, but good. The question remained, how? And so I got to scheming. <laughs> yes, everybody loves a good scheme, don't we? <laughs> I don't know, put like a, a remote control mouse trap in his bed or something like that. That's the first place I'd start. <laughs> I got up from my bed. It was late. Like, really late. Maybe two or three in the morning kind of late. And Chris was nowhere to be found. 
I walked around the Travel Plaza shop for a bit, just looking at my options. I went and bought a nice pile of snacks. Stuff that I had seen Chris gorging himself on before. Oh yeah, you need treats when it comes to training. This is a good first step. Gummy bears, snack cakes, cookies, all that cheap sugary crap. I don't like the snack cakes or the cookies, but hook me up with some of them gummy bears. That is my fucking weakness, honestly. <laughs> I love gummy anything. I never touch this stuff myself, but Chris, well, he absolutely loves sweets. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> I stocked up. I probably dropped almost a hundred bucks easy on treats for what was to be my good boy rewards. I returned to the truck and stashed the goods away in my backpack and underneath my bunk. Oh yeah, okay, that covers the positive response, but what about the negative response? How you gonna deal with that? Throw stuff at him? <laughs> it works for dogs, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty nice to my dogs, mostly. The positive reinforcement was in place, but yes, I still needed positive punishment. The truck stop didn't have any solutions for torturing neckbeards, <laughs> but in the small town where we were parked overnight, a Walmart Supercenter waited down the road. Oh, I am intrigued. 24 hour, whatever you need, God bless America. <laughs> and that's not even sarcastic. OP loves America because truckers are the blood in the veins of the body of America. Ha <laughs> ha. I think I made the last Andrew Jackson Jihad reference during the Chris Trucker stories, but yes, I'm still all about it, all right? To be perfectly clear. Eventually, I settled on the necessary training accoutrement. I needed to induce some, uh, <clears throat> positive punishment. What is it? <laughs> I walked up to the register with a handful of air horns. <laughs> and some high quality ear protection that I judiciously bought for myself. I was not screwing around today. I got the kind of stuff that you wear to the shooting range. <laughs> uh, I was thinking shot collar, you know, I don't know if they have remote controlled mousetrap, kind of defeats the purpose, <laughs> but you could jerry rig one up. But air horn, that's good. Doesn't cause any physical damage really. Aside from your ears, if you do it super close to his head. <laughs> it's relatively innocuous, but definitely loud enough to get the job done. Yeah, good idea, OP. <laughs> Let's see how it works for him. The clerk looked at me funny as he rung me up, and I just smiled at him and told him that the family was throwing a big old party, and we needed some noisemakers for the fun. <laughs> Total bullshit story, to be honest. And the kid probably didn't believe me one little bit, but that didn't matter. Yeah, why do you even owe him a story? <laughs> I don't give a shit, you're a clerk at Walmart, okay? <laughs> Ring me up and get me the hell out of here. I had what I needed. I returned to the truck with my arsenal. It must have been almost four in the morning when I got back to the cab. That's fine, since tomorrow Chris would be driving first, and I could sleep in as long as I wanted. Ah, luxury. <laughs> I stashed away the rest of the goods in my bunk, got a shower at the truck stop, and then returned to go to sleep. Oh yes, a plan in place. It is gonna work, isn't it? <laughs> Chris did stop doing this shit, I'm pretty sure, so uh, I have high hopes. When I woke up, the truck swayed and rocked as we traveled down the road once more. I pulled out my backpack from underneath the bunk and checked my preparations. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious pastries and a pile of air horns, <laughs> ready to use, greeted me. Then I looked up. Chris was behind the wheel. His incredulous shouting of, Back! Ah! had woken me up that morning. <laughs> I sidled up to the passenger seat and sat down and asked him how his night was. He told me that he met Sean Tall at the Motel 6. It hit a freaky time which solicited a very distinct lack of surprise and an even more distinct lack of approval. Yeah, you can't be doing this, Chris. And even after like a full day of jerking it, he's still gonna go buy a hooker? Ugh, get a hobby. <laughs> uh, this is this is crazy. What is, what is going on here? Y you're imbalanced in some way, aren't you, Chris? 
I just shrugged it off and started to zone out again as we went down the road. It didn't matter too much what unholy acts he had done the night before. I settled in and listened to his incredulous shouts of Daddy and Baka! Several hours later and somewhere in Idaho, we rolled into a rest stop and Chris got up from the seat. Is it over? <laughs> Does the test begin now? His shift had ended and yes, it was my turn to drive. And this time, before I took over the captain's chair, I grabbed my backpack from the back seat and brought it up with me. Yes, preparations. Here we go! When I settled in and punched the truck into gear, like clockwork, Chris had already begun to move towards the back, telling me that he needed to clean up. Oh, not today, motherfucker. <laughs> we roared back out onto the freeway, and I called back to him that he better not even think about jerking off today. He told me to shut my stupid mouth. And I pulled an air horn up from out of my backpack and set it on my lap, <laughs> waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I grimaced as the fetid stank of unwashed crotch and skid marks flowed into the stagnant air of the cab once again. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? <laughs> Uh, but today, OP has some repercussions, so here we go. I waited as the sound of aerosol spray was sprayed, and as his breathing got heavy and uneven. Then I slipped on my ear protection. With cold, calculated, almost murderous precision, I depressed the button on the horn, and with an ear splitting, Bwah! broke the awkward silence <laughs> that settled over the cab. I heard Chris shout, Oh, God damn it! <laughs> uh, you can't learn to enjoy that. His boner disappeared in a hormonal surge of fear. Nut ruined. Yeah, mission accomplished. I wish I could have seen the look on his face, but I had to instead be contented with his startled scream. <laughs> uh, uh. Ah, oh, it's a really good plan, OP. I don't know if I would have come up with it, but it is ingenious. It didn't take long for him to figure out what had happened, and he started shouting at me, saying, BRO! To which I let out another ear-splitting blast. BWOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
just as long as he didn't start wanking it. He told me to screw myself and that he was just tired. Sure, whatever you say, man, but I swear to God. <laughs> OP's got some like supersonic hearing, just some clothes rustling. He's like, I know what's going on. <laughs> it's air horn time. He went to the back and I heard him heave himself onto his bunk. I could hear him fiddling around back there with something. And I assumed that that something was his fly. Time only proved me correct as his obnoxiously loud breathing once more became belabored and I slid my ear protection into place and depressed the air horn once more. Blop! <laughs> A loud bang shook through the truck <laughs> as he jumped upright in his bed and struck his head on the roof of the cab. He started to shriek, What the hell, dude? I'm trying to take a nap! To which I replied that taking a nap didn't require him jerking off where I could hear him. <laughs> uh, oh, OP. I I'm glad that you're closely monitoring this situation. This is something for, for the greater good of society, isn't it? You will learn, Chris. <laughs> you will learn. He was beginning to break, I thought. Because he replied that he couldn't sleep if he didn't shoot his load. Ugh. <laughs> God damn it. Chew some valerian root and call me in the morning. <laughs> it was a surprisingly rare moment of honesty from the poopy cum man for him to even admit that he was doing the things that I had accused him of doing. Well, I told him, too bad. Because if he can't sleep without blowing his load, he must not be that tired then. <laughs> Point taken. He lumbered once more back to the passenger seat, and I threw another snacky cake his way. Yeah, this is, this is working out nicely. This arduous process would repeat itself a few more times as we made our way down the road throughout the shift. He would come up with some excuse to go to the back of the cab, try and fiddle with his junk, and I would blast the air horn. He's just itchy. Come on, OP, he's just really itchy. <laughs> it was getting to the point where he would look longingly to the back of the truck, knowing that if he just depleted my supply of horns, he could rub one out in peace. <laughs> uh, that's the point that we're getting to, huh? Good luck with that, because I had bought a bunch. <laughs> he got to the point where once again the truck stops were becoming appealing, and during the last half of my shift, he insistently requested that we stop at each and every one so he could eh, go and clean up. <laughs> that is what he calls it legitimately, and I don't understand where that came from. I guess it's just a more polite way of saying jerk it. <laughs> However, time is money, and miles don't make themselves. Chris had to sit there and suffer. I was drawing my line in the sand. Masturbating in front of me would be met with pain and discomfort. But being a good boy would result in snacky cakes. <laughs> Where reason failed, stimuli would prevail. This is such big brain time stuff that we're witnessing right here. It is science happening in real time. This experiment seems to have been a relative success. You didn't break him completely of the habit, but at least he's bending to your will. He has 100% become Pavlov's beard. <laughs> I was proud of my training as we pulled into a truck stop right on the edge of the Idaho and Montana line and prepared to retire for the evening. Chris, as usual, disappeared out into the travel plaza to do whatever foul deeds he liked to do. <laughs> and I lay down in my bed in an amazingly non-musky truck cab to relax outside of his insufferable presence. Yes, dude, you won. <laughs> Sleeping uh, in, the, in the glow of victory? God, that's the best sleep. And sleep did come on quick until about four in the morning, whereupon I woke up to the tinny droning of animated pornographic material from a cheap cell phone speaker. Oh no. <laughs> He didn't find any lot lizards, I guess. What Chris didn't realize was that I had kept my bag of air horns by my side. 
<laughs> and in the 3 a.m. quiet of that dark truck cab, I quietly slipped in my earplugs before depressing the air horn trigger once more. Whoop! <laughs> Uh, beautiful, perfect, wonderful. <laughs> uh, the following day, Chris and I finally made our delivery. He drove first that morning without incident and made the drop off. We didn't waste any time as another pickup was scheduled for us the same day and we got back on the road again. When it finally came my turn to drive, Chris didn't even make a move to go into the back of the cabin. Instead, he sat in the passenger seat wearing a sullen grimace on his face, only perking up when we would pass a travel plaza. <laughs> uh, he is just like a big, fat, stupid, gross puppy, isn't he? <laughs> He's like, ooh, ooh, they get to jerk it? Take a shower? <laughs> Not today, Chris. <laughs> he had come to hate the air horn and made the association that jacking it in the truck would be met with punishment. It proved surprisingly effective because eventually I didn't need the air horns anymore. I still kept one handy with my earplugs though, in case he gets any ideas while I'm driving. Better safe than sorry, isn't it? <laughs> you don't want him to revert. This fascinating tale, however, is far from over. As the days of struggle were not so cleanly resolved so shortly, Chris admitted that he didn't want to give up on rubbing one out in my presence or otherwise, and that he had come to resent the desperate tactics that I had come to employ. I still wonder if he somehow got off on imposing his sexual stank on others. <laughs> I think he just doesn't know. He's nose blind and thinks he's being sneaky, but that's just a theory. A beard theory. <laughs> Somebody kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take long for him to discover where I kept the horns, and the battle of the stash would soon commence. I'll tell you guys a little more about the days of struggle next time I post. I, however, have to get back to the grind. Until next time, guys. God, this post, this series is so popular for such a good reason. If it was the, the heyday of Neckbeard stories, this would be ranked above Sir Sam, above Wolfbeard, I'm pretty sure, because it is so beautiful what is happening right now. <laughs> we are doing our best to train this beard into something presentable among polite society, and we got a long way to go. I don't know if it's really even possible at the end of the day, but hope floats, man. <laughs> It seems like you learned something from the dog whisperer, so good. I'm glad. <laughs> Air horns and snacky cakes. That's the secret sauce. <laughs> if I ever find myself in this situation, well, I probably won't give it a try because I will have quit this job months ago. I ain't doing it. I can't. But you're a stronger man than me, OP. Holding out for the sake of your family, that is, that is the biggest brain time. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you writing the story as well. That is super, super cool, and I know everybody enjoys it. But you can let me know how much you enjoyed it by liking, commenting, and or subscribing on this video. Yes, indeed. Maybe share it around if you're brave. You know, you, <laughs> Grandma's not going to like this on her timeline, but she might get a laugh. I don't know. <laughs> We've also got links down in the description. You know, plugs, playlists, podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, etc., etc., Social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, Twitch, where this was live streamed. Yes, I'm everywhere on the internet. Just come out and find me. <laughs> We've also got my Patreon, of course. My gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, whom I would like to thank as I do every episode. Jerry, Jerry, much. Uh, so thank you. Mawire, Jerry, dark, luscious. Ooh, <laughs> Harley Hoenn, Robert Wade, Scamille, Sarah, Malama Man. Yeah, I figured out how to say that because I've been instructed. Roxanne Wolf, Sim, Jerry, Conrad, Ingy, Captain Clown, Jerry, Destiny Piper, Him and Jerry, Broken Logic, Esteban, Poor Old Lang Son. Might be the end for Iuary. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. We need all the Jerrys. <laughs> or Gabby Steve, Bean Tom with a bag of bottles from downtown. Or Jerry, beg for forgiveness. No forgiveness here. Silo Revolver, not Bang Bang. <laughs> PCB, the original Jerry, Jerry, Tick Jerry, Jerry's Kasune, Satori, 211 Jerry, the two Jerrys. A Jerry ready for springtime. Yeah, here we go. A Justy Jargonian Jerry, Aspen XO, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Aurora Wildheart, Grizzly, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Bench Gremlin, Play the Hero, Blip, Blip, Jerry, Captain, Jerry, Commander, Jay Tank, Confederate Jew, Dennis Dayton, Dr. Lugs, Duck, Emergent Jewel, Air
Fire Drake, Gypsy, Hangry BR, yeah, I'm Slip Jerry, Sock the Real Jerry, I own Slip Jerry, I'm just imitating Irish Pirate. So much swappy treasure with not but Teddy Queens and my Polios. <laughs> Radiated Jim, Itchy Nuts, Itchy Scratch, Bro, a Pimp named J. Chris, J.M. Coon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Nice, Jerry Evil, Jerry the Outlaw on the Trunk, Jerry Beans, now with green apple and Jerry Berry flavors. Yum yum, John Hero, John Jerry, Jingle Hammer Schmidt. You're not gonna believe this, but that's, that's my fucking name too. <laughs> Crewy, Legitimate Girl, Miss Monday, like and subscribe. Uba Lady Dicks, the next to last Jerry Bender. I have anxiety. <laughs> Uh, it's a good one. Marvel Mabel. Oh, we're gonna get Mabel's up in here. Mel Garden Destroyer, Metal Factor, Needless King 89, Nightmare Jerry, Faith of the Pines, Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth, Queen's Way, Losing Quagmires, Ramsay Lackermates, Rose Jerry Miller, TSM Kirby, Sorry to the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Sa, Scarlet Scabin, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bringer of the Law, Silo Imp, Seventy Gunner, Sidehappy Boomstick, Brilliant Tomato, Tabio Blue, Tango Fair, Tenton Monster, The Italian Greyhound, Dino, The Little Who, Who Witcher Fusky, Trying to find a mob, we'll get back to the real world. Uh, you probably don't want to blow into that balloon, not <laughs> Sustinky Pinky Balloon. <laughs> Unbusy B, V3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Void Version 3, because Red keeps killing me and Brothers. Oh, it's only twice. It's only twice. <laughs> Wiki Tech, Will Max, Zephyr the Gargoyle, or Clay, Void Scent Collector, or Cringe. It's Jerry Time. Holds Red X Morpher, Self Reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. Redwin, not the Viper, third stuff, Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, one like Jerry's lost in the wild, the normal Jerry. Got my wits back, but now I'm stuck with a bill for two hotel rooms. You can share a bed, that's fine. <laughs> Admiral T Tank, Amber Alder, another stupid hipster, Atomic Jerry, Zilla Brick, the Tom Army, Babs, you can bartender Kilia, Blueberry, and Apple Pie, Broken Spine, Horse Ratchet, Original Different Jerry, and that's Cake Jerry. California Jerry, Girl Shepherd, Seven Lock, Cody B, Corporal Admiral Lieutenant, uh, Prairie Warrior Wood Jerry. You know, you get what I'm saying. Crypt Teddy's D Crazy, aka SDI Jerry, The Fawn Jerry, Death to Tuna, Dopamine Dane Jerry, is Dwarf Dude, Ghost of Alpha Heat Knot, Holy Berry Jerry, Janitor Jerry, Lay low with Vladimir, till I can make it across the border with my remaining marbles. Good luck, they're on the lookout for the Jerry's these days. The Jeffrey, the Jeffrey, Jero of Rivia, Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Wimpy Pop, Jerry the Sussy Pocket, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Jerry Old Rivera, Jerry Roxers, Jerry Roleplaying Game, Judge Jerry and Executioner, Keen Tales, Kid Marvelous, Kids Again, Life of Guardian, Little Lane Woods, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia Sini, maybe next time, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Dungeon, Not Invisible Angel. Oh, it's time, it's time, <laughs> it's Jerry time. <laughs> Raptor Art, Cheese by Jerry Pie, Snary the Snom Jerry, Snowman with his best in life to crush your enemies, to put them feet to Jesus, to hear the lamentation of their body pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky the Rogue, Spooky Scary Jerry Ton. Techno Doves, the original Jerry, he's not. To Infinity Jerry and Beyond, we're doing it. Unkale, Underwater Movies, formerly the X Card. A Fortune Jerry screaming at Nookie's latest magical girl for transformation. They make a stop! <laughs> Throws two liter Mountain Dew. Girl, hey, neck beer, grow! <laughs> <laughs> it's Jerry time, holds Red X Morpher. Hygiene, it's Jerry time, holds Red X Morpher. Humility. <laughs> we only need five, it's Jerry times, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and thank you to my $1 patrons as well, of course. Beautiful people that they are. It just feels so good that my patrons are out here putting their money where my mouth is or something like that. <laughs> See, because I talk and they pay me money and I use the money to, uh, well, I was going to say to eat. That would fit with the joke. But what I actually use it for is like paying for the thumbnails, paying my editor, et cetera, et cetera, paying for the podcast service as well. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for, for making it happen for me. If you can afford to donate, that is amazing. If you can't, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me. I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, especially after you're done cleaning up. Mm. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,